Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various type of win for the Night Sky Tournament here in Golf Clash the game. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Play Demic and before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content for free. Last but not least get the ultimate tournament guides and other value packages on patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Check them all out in the description down below. Follow the info box on the right hand side to find the elevation adjustment, club distance adjustment, combined with what ball and club type I do suggest you to play with. Have in mind, you don't have to follow my suggestions, but there is always a plan behind it. Make sure if you do have any questions to email support at golfclashtommy.com and we are uh, ready to help you with whatever you need in your Golf Clash game. In the end though, let's focus and go to hole number one. For hole number one, we're gonna play on the left hand side. And here I do feel it's gonna be very beneficial to play with a low level power ball. So I'm all in here to have a little bit of side spin, but also have the power zero so we can put ourselves into absolute maximum distance. Adjustment is gonna be maximum distance plus 10. And once we have done that adjustment, we're gonna take our shot. In the end though, you can see that I do push up my shot here in the end and that is something you can do, you don't have to do it, but if you do want to reach further down on the fairway, you do need to push up that in the end. And you can see here we roll nicely, staying far away from the rough on the right and now we're gonna have an open shot towards the pin on the right there. So, second shot and I really like this spot because here I can actually rest in minimum distance if I do have a crosswind or I do have a headwind. Two and a half bar backspin and, I'm I, and I am in minimum distance of my club and that is what we are going to play it as as well. Minimum distance, no elevation is what we're getting at and we are obviously looking to get this ball to drop sometimes. It's not an easy one when we play with a wood club, it's never gone, going to be, but it's definitely gonna be a possibility. A big reason as well why a power zero ball is going to be a good thing is the fact that if we do play with a power one or a power two, we might come too high up for the second shot and gonna be in between clubs, especially with a tailwind, and then we're not gonna have an opportunity at all to go for the eagle on hole number one, which we do need to do. So, hole number one. We do have a good eagle chance by going to the left. For hole number two, we're gonna have uh, once again one from the Shiruba Springs. And here you can see there is a very interesting rough bump here. And I do believe that rough bump is going to be featured in a tournament situation if we do have a straight tailwind. If we do have a tailwind or crosswind, I would recommend you to play with a power one ball. If you do have any form of headwind, go up with a power two ball so you don't uh, get in between clubs. Using max left spin, I'm also using somewhere between one to three bars of backspin depending on the wind angle towards the pin. Aiming with the ball guideline short of pin due to not having a fully developed ball guideline and therefore we need to compensate for that by moving you know moving the ball guideline back so we don't come in too hot this is a difficult par three especially for the fact that we do have a very high second bounce you can see we bounce on that little mound that is further back and we get a very high uh, flight path or like a lot of flight time as well and therefore it's very difficult to get the direction correct so if we can play a rough bump in a tournament situation fine then that's going to be the absolute best way to do then we take away the secondary bounce wind effect but if we do not uh, have the possibility to play the rough bump then we're going to have to play on the fairway as displayed in the video For hole number three, we're gonna play a classic. This course has been, or like this hole has been in the game for so long that I think it actually was there from the beginning. Four and a half bar top spin, and then maximum side spin to the right. We're looking for the ball guideline to be pointing straight down the middle in between the two rough patches. Adjustment is gonna be maximum distance plus 10. 
So we do adjust for max plus 10, then we are going to push this club up to maximum distance again, because we are, we do want to gain the most distance possible here for our shot. Perfect ball, and we see the ball carry down the fairway, which is really lovely. And we're looking to get this ball to roll up into a situation where we will not be having this pole in our face. And you can see here that we are not pole, but tree, obviously. The tree in our face. And if we can just get past it, like we're doing here now, we are able to cope with that in a good way. And you see that I'm playing with a Viper. I would recommend to go with the Sniper if you do have that in at least level 6 to be able to get a good ball guideline and a good accuracy. This shot, even though it's a very open shot towards the green, is a difficult one. And the reason it's a difficult one is due to all the bumpy parts that is just before the green. So you're going to have to just get the ball to bounce in the absolute correct spot. Otherwise, the outcome may be very different than what you're looking for. Maximum distance plus 10 is what we're going to use here also. And obviously try to hit perfect. The beauty with this part 5 as well is that we can play very well with a low level ball like the Quasar. Often on part 5s we are using a power 3 ball as we do need distance either with the drive or we do need it for the second shot. But here on this one the Quasar is enough with a power 1 and the only, thing, only reason I would change my ball would be if I do have a headwind for the drive because I'm not interested in going max overpower with a driver with bad accuracy. So if you do have a headwind for the drive, change to a power 2 or even a power 3 ball depending on which type of which ball type you do have the most of. For hole number 4, we're gonna play with the Guardian. It doesn't matter if you have the Guardian in level 1, you should be playing with the Guardian here as you do need the backspin. You see here I'm using 4 bars of backspin and I'm aiming, or at least attempting to aim for the ball guideline to the hole. But the thing that I do forget here is that the green does slope slightly to the right here, especially after hitting the rough in the, in the you know, direction as we do. Adjustment is maximum distance plus 40 for zero. So we're playing this one very elevated and that is what makes this very difficult. And that's why you're going to see a lot of people missing that rough uh, or missing their target no matter how they are aiming here and go into the rough or into the sand. So make sure you notice maximum distance plus 40 as an elevation and club distance. The thing that I would like us to change here is that we do need to add five bars of backspin if we do have headwind, crosswind, we do need to go five and a half and if we do have a headwind, six, six and a half bar backspin would be good. Navigator for those that can, a Marlin will be okay as well as that is the lowest type of ball that is not a basic ball. In my opinion, this rough bump is actually a good opportunity, but you really need to know what you're doing when it comes to elevation, otherwise it's going to be a birdie hole. For hole number five, we're looking to play on the left hand side. And here I'm using a power one ball in tailwind, in crosswind and headwind. I would like us to go up to at least a power two ball to make sure that we don't have to go with that much overpower. Four and a half bar top spin and as much side spin to the left possible. Adjustment is max plus 10 and then I push up to max once I'm done. The plan here is to get this ball to obviously bounce first on the fairway and then to roll as far down on the other fairway possible. The plan we do have here by going on the left hand side instead of playing on the right hand side is that we are playing a linear way towards the hole which means that we can go with yardage notes if we want to and also it's going to be a pretty nice second shot here towards the pin because now we are going to play uphill and it's going to be a medium distance minus 10% which means that this ball is going to be less affected by the wind than normal and therefore it's going to be much easier to control and also for those of you not using any help tool to adjust going to see a much better consistency with a shot like this when you don't have to adjust as much as normal. Once again, medium distance, minus 10%, I play with a long iron, which is the backbone. You can play with whatever long iron you want. The only thing that I would like you to have is at least 
three bars of backspin so you have the possibility to go with backspin if you have a very long drive. Bounce on the fairway before the green right at the pin for a lovely eagle here in hole number five. So for hole number six, we will be playing with our big topper to utilize its enormous topspin, trying to gain as much distance possible on the second fairway. You will have to have in mind that if you do have tailwind, you will be in between clubs or very close to in between clubs that could make you have to go with a slight underpower with your shot. But we are looking to get uh, to play this shot with a lot of topspin and then we kind of have to handle the situation what, that we do have here. Max topspin, one bar side spin to the right. You see I'm using a little bit of underpower when it comes to playing in tailwind. If we do play in crosswind or in headwind, we obviously don't have to go with any form of underpower whatsoever. Minimum distance and no elevation for the drive. Now we are looking to position ourselves up on the fairway as far down possible. And now the second shot is going to be difficult because we first and foremost have a long way towards the green. And we are going to have to use a lot of topspin to be able to get there. I'm using the horizon if I do have the possibility. If I don't have the possibility to use the horizon, we're using the big dog, which has power, but does not have the same amount of topspin. And the thing that's going to happen here is that we bounce on the fairway by using a little bit of curl and we're going to get down to the green area. And here we're going to have a simple wedge towards the pin. With the big dog, the wedge will be further out, and that's what makes this hole difficult. Because sure, you can try to go max overpower over the rough, but it's going to be very hard to reach. And you also have a bunker on the right-hand side will, that will definitely be in play. Power 3 ball minimum, not for the drive, for the second shot is going to be an absolute must. Those of you being able to play with another power ball, you can do so as well. Max plus 10 for the second shot is what we're looking for. For hole number seven, the final of the part three, we do have the Milano and the classic rough bump. This is a rough bump that you should attempt in any form of wind except for straight tailwind. Here I'm using a Viper for some reason. We should be using the Sniper here all the time. One bar of backspin is used and I'm aiming directly at the pin. Adjustment should be minimum distance with a 10% over adjustment which is something that I do use too much here with our Viper. So minimum distance plus 10 is what we're gonna use and power zero ball. The reason we're using a power zero ball is because otherwise we will go in between clubs even if we do have an angled tailwind like we're having now. So we do want to obviously prevent that. Use the sniper Use the sniper. I cannot stress that enough. Use the sniper even though it is in a lower level. You will still have a ball guideline from the rough. And the backspin is going to be one and a half bar backspin in tailwind. Crosswind one bar and in headwind half a bar. And then you're going to get the correct speed towards the pin. Minimum distance plus 10. And this is a very good chance making a hole in one on the part three of the Milano. For hole number eight, we're gonna have a good chance for an eagle. Here we start with an extra mile, which is a driver with a lot of power, using four and a half bar top spin and as much side spin to the left possible. You can see here that I'm aiming with the second bounce to be a bit more right into the rough than what we kind of want the ball to end up with. That is because I don't want to aim closer to the rough on the left. So in the end, I adjust max plus 10. I make a little push up in the end to be able to uh, bounce over the rough here with Tailwind. And the thing that we're looking for here for this shot is obviously to bounce over the rough if possible. But we also need to be realistic and we do need to be getting that ball uh, or like having at least six parts of topspin with our driver otherwise we will not be able to reach over the rough then we can do the second option which is what we did there bounce into the rough and roll out because most of the cases we will not be having that six bars of topspin 
that we're looking for. Second shot is going to be a, a short iron towards the pin. We're going to play medium distance of our club. And here I'm making it very simple. I'm aiming for the first bounce to be on the fairway before the fringe and the green because that one is more flat compared to the fringe and the green and it has brought me more consistency than other, spot, other used spots there for the first bounce. One bar of backspin and I would say if you are a maximum distance club I would say one and a half bar backspin would be good. Medium distance one bar in minimum distance I would not go with any backspin whatsoever and just play with no spin. And adjustment medium distance no elevation obviously the club distance is depending on how far you reach with your drive if you are in medium distance minimum distance or a maximum distance of your club no matter what though very good chance making an eagle here in hole number eight of the milano For hole number nine, we will be playing on the left side here from from T. This because the T box is put uh, too much to the left, and it's gonna have to require a lot of curl and topspin for uh, on our club to be able to play on the fairway on the right. So I'm using in this case a wood club as a driver. So I'm playing with the big dog and a power three ball to be able to have enough top spin to get the distance enough on the other fairway. So it's a bit technical, but I do think that's a very valuable thing to have in mind. And also if we do have a headwind, we are able to play with a wood club as we're playing with a power three ball. 10% over adjustment for the drive and we're looking to get this ball as far down the fairway possible. This is a little short, we could push it a little bit harder than that. Second shot is gonna be just a transport shot towards the green area. Here as you can see we do have a lot of distance left towards the pin and we also have this freaking bunker just before the green as well which is directly in our way and therefore we're gonna play around that. So I'm using top spin, I'm using left spin and I'm going to play with maximum distance minus 10%. And minus 10 means that the ball is gonna be less affected by the wind as we're playing uphill. I'm using overpower, which is gonna be approximately three rings, and I'm going with full curl to the left. And now the plan is to bounce on the fairway and then over to the other fairway or to the green to just have a simple pot or a simple wedge for an eagle. So in the end, if we do play with the club setup, that is pretty standard in rookie and in from front tee. We will see ourselves uh, focusing on getting the eagle, not trying to get albatross. Because I do believe if you push too hard here, you will see yourself ending up into the rough with your drive. And then you can't reach for the green for the second shot. And then it's almost game over for the eagle. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough with various type of win for the rookie division in the night sky tournament here in golf clash the game make sure you join our discord link to discord in the description down below you can also get our packages our website access pass which is very very um, recommended when it comes to getting general text guide for every hole in the whole game elevations everything you know check them out you know website access pass only for two bucks a month video sponsored here by golf clash and play and once again thank you for watching and good luck in your golf clash game